Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to be talking about kayaks versus canoes for bug out, wilderness excursions, survival and preparedness. Let's get to it. I just want to post a disclaimer that in some shots in this video I'm not wearing a life preserver. Those were in conditions that I personally felt uh, it wasn't necessary, but of course as a disclaimer, you should always wear life preservation equipment when you find yourself in a boat like this. All right, so this video was sponsored in part by Pelican. Now I'd done some research on their kayaks. I purchased the Catch 120 kayak that you see here. And I contacted the company. I said, look, I really like this kayak. I have a YouTube channel. Did you want to sponsor the channel? Their sponsorship didn't come in a monetary form, but they did send me a kayak to review, and it's the upgraded Catch 120 NXT. Basically, it's pretty much the same kayak, the exact same platform as the Catch 120, only this one has a lot more bells and whistles. Things that you would probably want to install after market anyways, only they're pre-installed, and it's pretty much the same price as its predecessor. Now I'm going to merge the reasons why I chose this kayak with some of the benefits of kayaking over canoeing in general. One of the main reasons why I chose a kayak over a canoe for my one-man excursions is because it's simply easier to paddle, especially if you're a beginner. Uh, the double paddle is just going to be easier and I'm able to keep a very steady pace with the double paddle system such that I can pretty much paddle for hours without really taking an extended break. The other reason why I wanted a kayak is because they float in shallower water. They're easy to get going. They can go through, they can go to places basically where you wouldn't want to take a canoe. They're far more agile. They can handle rougher conditions. This one also allows you to stand up in it. It has more versatile seating arrangement. You can paddle on your knees. The chair is adjustable so you can change it to two seating positions. One low that keeps you down low to the water which is more for paddling and another which is up high which is more for fishing. Now this is, as you might have guessed, as it's called the Catch 120. This is a fishing kayak. So this platform was made primarily for the purpose of fishing. It's wider and because of that it's not going to be as fast as your longer, leaner, more streamlined kayak designs. But that's quite alright because I still found it to be very fast. I also like the fact that it's not that long. While this might reduce the top speed a bit, it makes handling the kayak when it's not in the water a lot easier. I also like the colors of the kayak. The original one I got was kind of like an OD green. And this one is in a lighter green camouflage pattern. This is a very comfortable kayak, has great maneuverability. I didn't really take it over any rough waters. I'm not really a whitewater rafting type guy. And I probably wouldn't want to do that with a boat like this. Although you're going to take on some water with this boat, it has a hollow enclosed hull which is all water sealed. So water can't get in there if it's splashing over top and it has a very shallow deck so even if you were taking on water you probably wouldn't take on so much that you would sink. Now I should say that the payload of this kayak is another reason why I purchased it and it's 400 pounds so myself with my gear on would be about 200 pounds and that would permit me to divvy up another 200 pounds of gear if I wanted to go on an extended backcountry excursion. The only problem with this is that the majority of the storage space is in the rear. So as you can see there's a rear hatch. This was a feature that was not on the original Catch 120. But of course there are kits available that you can modify your Catch 120 if you do find one of those a little bit cheaper. You can modify it and put your own compartments in there. But as I was saying the problem with the weight distribution is that 70 to 80 percent of the weight is going to be on the back unless you put like your real heavy items in that front hatch which is sizable however it is an oval hatch and I suppose it's made that way for waterproofing it's easier to make a uh, enclosed waterproof hatch which is ovular but I would prefer that this was a larger square a square 
just allows you to maybe stuff more into that hatch. The ovular design makes it so that there's certain items like cases and stuff that might not fit in there. So you're limited with what you can store in the front hull. But because it's hollow underneath, you can still store a lot of stuff in the front, basically underneath where you sit but you're gonna be limited to things which are long and narrow, like a saw or an ax or a firearm or something like that which was longer and lean and had a lot of weight to it. You could store some water jugs up there, but generally speaking, a lot of that weight is gonna be centered on the back. Now, I was in some pretty treacherous waters on a big lake, not really treacherous waters, but it's very windy, lots of white caps, and I was actually taking on water and I had this sucker loaded and down. I wasn't at the 400 capacity, but the majority of that weight was on the rear of the boat. And I did start taking on a lot of water. I made it to shore without serious incident, but I think had I been out there longer, the boat may have started to take on too much water and possibly capsized but again I had it loaded very back heavy so lesson learned if you do purchase this boat and you do plan on loading it up to the nines it will carry the weight especially in calm waters you'll have no problems but you'll want to make sure that that weight is evenly distributed as possible because remember if you're sitting in the back then the majority of your body weight is also towards the rear or the rear 30% of the kayak and because the storage platform with the bungee cord that you see here is basically at the back that's where you're storing the majority of your goods and of course you have the back hatch so from here on in I'm a little reluctant to use that back hatch unless you're really really going uh, heavy if, you know if you got ammo if you got things like liquids uh, basically anything that weighs a lot you want to put that in the front and you can even put it in front of the adjustable footrest and that's another great thing about this boat it has all those bells and whistles modern day um, kayaking creature comforts like the adjustable footrest which is works really great gives you a lot of leverage when you're paddling there's just so many options with the built-in inline track system so there's this is a standardized system that you can mount a variety of different things on you can mount fishing rod holders uh, GPS fish finders transducers and the mounting options for trolling motors are pretty much as numerous as your imagination will allow so you can see here I mounted a, a trolling motor just by using a small four foot two by four which I basically just bolted into my catch 120 I haven't done that yet to the catch 120 NXT I'm trying not to do any drilling into this boat because it pretty much has everything I need so if I can find a good mounting system for my trolling motor which doesn't require me to do a lot of drilling not that I'm religiously against it or anything it's just you know I'm trying to keep the boat as much in its factory like condition as possible now I can say that this is probably one of the most comfortable kayaks I've ever sat in because there's so many different seating positions like you can kneel in it like I said there's the two different types of ways that you can sit in it never did I feel as though I, I had to get off the boat because my legs were sore or anything like that and I spent days on this boat uh, in the many trips that I took with it and I it's just a very ergonomic and it's very nice to travel in. It's a lot better in my opinion than a sit-in kayak in which you're basically stuck inside the thing and if your legs start getting sore or cramping up uh, you can't really stand up in it or you could try but you'd probably end up tipping over. With this you can actually stand up although I would not advise doing that even if there was moderate waves unless you really mastered the balance of it. The longer you stand up on it, it it's kind of like riding a bike You'll start to get a feel for it, you'll start to find your center of gravity and it becomes easier and easier. But you want to do this with great caution when you first start because it's not just, you know, stand up and you don't have to worry about balancing the boat at all. It is going to teeter a little bit, but it is still a sit on top stand up kayak. This one comes with two built in rear rod holders and one forward 
rod holder, which is uh, convenient. Then of course the sky is the limit as to how many rod holders you want to basically built into these things. What I love about this platform is that it's so open to customization. I mean, if you're a person who wants to go to town and, and fully customize this and drill all the bells and whistles into there, then for a lot of things, you probably wouldn't have to do that because you had the track system, but it's just a nice platform to work with because it's wide. You got a lot of surface area to work with as opposed to a normal kayak or something like a canoe. Now, of course, there are benefits to canoes in that you can hold more stuff in a canoe typically, but I like that these float on shallower water and so you never really have to get your feet too wet. They don't uh, take on water as much. And of course, you're gonna be able to take more people in a canoe. So this is for my one-man excursions. Uh, once I get a little older, well, now that we have two, my wife can join me if she chooses. So for a one-man lone wolf bug out boat, I think a kayak is, is far superior to a canoe. You can see here the bag that I'm using to load up the uh, bungeed platform is an Ortley bag, which is made by a German company. I'll post a link to that in the description. It's a waterproof bag. It actually is the bag that comes with the mono walker. I should also add that there are dolly systems available to transport the kayak. It can be a little bit difficult even though there's four handles. I found that the handles they don't really feel like they can support the entire weight of the kayak when you're lifting it and moving it around. It feels as though if you put too much stress on them that they might the bolts might pop out or something. It, it's just the plastic that they're made of doesn't feel as strong as it could be. It could be reinforced a little bit more in my opinion. It's a 70 pound kayak so it has a significant amount of weight to it. But if you are concerned about transport, there is dolly systems you can get, just two wheels, you strap it on there, it takes all of one minute. I'm sure it would be okay on a well-beaten, wider trail. Pelican also makes anchors like the one shown here. They didn't send me the paddles until one of my last trips with it this year, and it was an adjustable paddle, and their paddles are actually really good. One problem uh, you'll find with a lot of kayaking paddles is they're gonna get wet because the water runs down but not only does the Pelican design have a rubber stopper on it, it has this uh, innovative design where there's kind of a hook and the water actually will follow that hook and it will bead off before it comes down the handle, it gets your you know pants wet or something like that. So I'd say after your 1000 stroke, you won't be getting wet anymore. There's a bit of a technique to it that you just kind of fall into and I was able to master that no problem. Now I probably should have said sooner, but the boat is made of a multi-layered, what they call Ram X polyethylene. They claim that this is a lighter and higher density and thus stronger material than what uh, typical kayaks in this class are made out of. So it's UV resistant and it's impact resistant. Now I ran this thing over quite a few rocks, no serious collisions or anything like that but I didn't have any problems with leaks. The part of the boat that you stand up on does have some rubber mat so you don't slip and fall into the water, which is kind of nice. Now, it has a two year warranty. Uh, for me, I think something like this should have more than a two year warranty. I, I don't understand why the warranty would only be two years, especially if it's built of this uh, material that they say it is. Especially considering that a lot of canoes, I mean, they're going to last a lifetime for the most part, and even kayaks too. Perhaps Pelican can chime in and let us know why it's only a two-year warranty. But that said, I don't foresee there being any major problems with this boat. Usually with products of this nature, industry standards are pretty stringent because obviously people's lives depend on these things. And I know that Pelican typically makes very quality products. They're the ones that make the camera and basically gear storage cases, which are really heavy duty and robust. I'm going to post links to all of this stuff in the description if you want to pick up yourself a uh, Catch 120 NXT. I plan on doing a lot of longer excursions with it next year along the river here, the mighty Saskatchewan River. 
and I might even put a, somebody suggested I put a windsock on there I may put the trolling motor on there but that's just a lot of weight because then you gotta carry the battery and if you're going downstream and you're not strictly fishing then you don't really need that on there I mean it's nice to have it if you're tired and you need a bit of a break but what I found with uh, my catch 120 with the trolling motor is you kind of get too used to it and it doesn't allow you to really hone your paddling skills and just to get into that mindset but it certainly is very nice for fishing because the trolling motors are, are really great another great thing about the kayak is that it's very quiet it's much quieter than a normal boat and you know the banging on the canoe and this that and what have you what I liked about my catch 120 is that it has this great uh, camo color and you could easily pull it into the bush so you know that would be a little harder to do with a canoe and a lot of canoes the color you know it's like a gray or a red I'm sure nowadays you can probably buy some pretty nice camouflage canoes but I really like the, the paint job on the catch 120 and the catch 120 NXT so some of the potential improvements I would like to see for this it'd be nice if they had a modification for a rear storage container or a receiver system that you could perhaps install one of Pelican's larger storage crates perhaps one that was a little bit more lightweight like no more than 10 pounds or something so it didn't dig into your 400 pound payload too much and then find a way to broaden the storage in the front compartment and I think this could be a great excursion kayak in addition to uh, just a fishing kayak the wide platform just offers so many responsibilities I mean you could lay down in this thing you could you could sleep in it although I wouldn't encourage that just for safety purposes but you can cook in it I have videos of me cooking in this kayak you can just do a lot of things in it that you probably couldn't do in a normal kayak or a canoe that was not very sturdy it's just a nice sturdy flat platform so let me know if you have any questions in the comments I plan on uh, taking this sucker out next year although my boy will probably be old enough next year to join me on some of these excursions anyways maybe not my uh, boating outings but definitely gonna get him out doing some camping next year but there'll still be many lone wolf outings yet to come that uh, I'm gonna get a lot of pleasure out of this boat from don't forget to like comment subscribe any questions fire them at me in the comment section I'll do my best to answer them to the best of my knowledge Canadian prepper out